Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. And can somebody say amen? Somebody say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Any apostolics in the house tonight? Yes, hallelujah. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. God be the glory. I'd like to report to you tonight that Ava did have her surgery on Tuesday. Everything had gone very good. Everything had took. And matter of fact, she had surgery on Tuesday, and she had actually been discharged from the hospital, I believe, two, Wednesday morning at 10 o'clock. So, amen. Thank you, church, for praying. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. And somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Why don't you shake three or four hands and greet one another in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, amen. Thank the Lord. In everything. In everything. That's right. In all things. All of things. Yes. Amen, amen. Hallelujah. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. I thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God be the glory. Amen, amen, amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. You may be seated. We have a special tonight, and uh, I figured I'm not going to sing it, but I'm going to let somebody else sing it. Amen. Okay, Brother Joe.
it's true. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Amen. We're going to do this again. <laughs> Let's stand. Amen. Praise the Lord. Somebody say amen. 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 My wife and I were going down the road the other day, and uh, she had go gone to the library and got some stories, and uh, not only that, but had actually got this one CD, so I thought we'd play a song on it tonight. Amen. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. And praise the Lord. God is good. I have been very mixed today, very mixed today, so we're going to make the best of what we have got tonight, and I do know what I feel. It's just one way of trying to bring it out, and hallelujah, let God have his direction. Amen. Can we once again lift our hands up and let's just magnify him. We thank you, Lord, in everything. We praise you, God, in all things. Hallelujah. We thank you for what you're doing, God, and what you're going to do. And we come tonight to, uh, to give that name praise to the Most High God, and that name is Jesus Christ. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Praise his name. Well, I want to say welcome to those that have been gone and uh, glad that you're back and welcome to those that may be leaving and that you'll be coming back and uh, we'll praise the Lord and everybody does get back and uh, it's been this time of the year that things have been happening. Praise the Lord. Take your Bibles with me tonight if you would. I'd like to go to St. Luke, the 20th chapter and start with verse 1. Amen. Luke, the 20th chapter, starting with verse 1. The Bible says, And it came to pass that on one of those days, as he taught the people in the temple, 
and preached the gospel, the chief priest and the scribes came upon him with the elders. And you can be seated. The Bible says, and spake unto him, saying, telling us, by what authority dost thou these things? Or who is he that gave thee this authority? And he answered and said unto him, I will also ask you one thing and answer me. They tried to ask him a question. They tried to confound the almighty God, friend, God that was manifested in that flesh. And I will say this, the Lord has his own techniques of how to come back at different people. And when it came to these scribes, the Lord said, okay, well, let me ask you a question also. And uh, let me ask you one thing, and then I want you to answer me. Uh, and he goes on to say, the baptism of John, was it from heaven or of men? And they reasoned. If you remember a few weeks ago, I had came to you and made that statement also. They reasoned, okay? The Bible says, and they reasoned with themselves, saying, if we shall say from heaven, he will say, why then believe ye him not? Amen. But if we say of men... All the people will stone us, for they be persuaded that John was a prophet. And they answered that they could not tell whence it was. And Jesus said unto him, Neither tell I you by what authority I do these things. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to speak tonight on, can I better say, Jesus Christ. I don't know any other greater authority. Um, Anyone else that was recorded within history, understand as it was by Jesus Christ himself. And my mind had begun to ponder today somewhat. And uh, as it had begun to ponder, uh, you know, we have read a lot of books. And we've read a lot of different stories. And many times when uh, you may purchase a book, if you get it from the Pentecostal Publishing House or some Christian store, that's one thing. But if you notice within our world today that many times you'll see across the bottom, understand, of that book, or maybe at the top, number one bestseller in New York. And you talk about authors that are being rated, uh, authors that are famous, and you talk about good stories, whether it be criminal or justice or just whatever it may be. Uh, they're rated by man themselves. But I will say this, as my mind had begun to ponder and that was, there was a book that was written some several thousand years ago, friend. And I'll say this, it, has, it, it never made the New York, understand, number one bestseller. But I will say this, it made the world's bestseller, friend, around our world. And understanding any book that has been purchased more than any other book, friend, understand, is the word of Jesus Christ. Did you hear what I said tonight? You talk about authority. You talk about a name, friend. You talk about somebody that moved this world, that changed the course of history. It was Jesus Christ himself that gave his very life for you as well as he had given it for me. My mind began to ponder upon the name of Jesus. And yet there is so much scripture. And can I better say tonight, there are so many words that God himself had said that we could hang on and, and understand and go from day to day. I do want to say I thank God for every promise that he put in the book, friend. Every one of 7,000 of them. Because, friend, I need as many promises as I can get from God. And, friend, I, you talk about teachings. I want to say tonight, friend, understand the teachings that was delivered unto man. I've been to conferences, friend. I've been to meetings. Uh, I've, I've been to understand districts and uh, different places that I have gone. And I will say this to you, friend. Uh, it's one thing to hear somebody that is famous. And maybe they're an excellent speaker. And yet they're one that is well-renowned amongst the ranks of the apostolics. But I will say this. There has never been another as Jesus Christ. When the Bible said, friend, uh, that he moved the multitudes. And there were those that hung on every edge of word that he had brought across. Uh, friend, man can do so much with the anointing of the Holy Ghost. But I will say to you tonight, friend, there is something special about the name of Jesus. You talk about healing, and you talk about power, and you talk about majesty, and you talk about glory, friend. I'm going to tell you this. Jesus puts any man to shame. He puts any man to shame. 
And I began to ponder, and friend, especially in, in the day and the hour, and I want to say to the saint of God tonight that I want you to be encouraged in Jesus Christ. Be encouraged in Jesus Christ. You say, why, preacher? Because we're coming to a grand finale, friend, that is going to happen before too long. You talk about something that was prophesied over thousands of years ago. I'm going to tell you something. It was Jesus as he moved upon the men of old. And they began to prophesy and to talk about things that are happening in our day and hour. Friend, I want to say, saint of God, be encouraged in the Holy Ghost because God's about ready to come back. Amen, amen. You may be a little tired tonight. You may be a little weary. But I want to say to the weary tonight, I want you to understand there ain't many more days that you're going to be weary. Because God is coming back for his children. He's coming back for those that are called by his name. He's coming back for those that are rapture ready, friend. I want to say tonight, to God be the glory in everything. Hallelujah, amen. Somebody say amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. God be the glory through it all. Amen. Anybody feel a little tired tonight? Come on, anybody feel a little weary tonight? Anybody still in love with Jesus tonight? Come on, anybody still said, devil, I'm going to love him. I'm going to worship him. I don't care how tired I am. I'm still going to give him the glory. My God, my God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I, I must be honest with you. I don't know where I'm going to go tonight, but I'm going to wind up somewhere. Amen. God be the glory. I'm not nervous. I'll say this. I know what I'm feeling on the inside. And I just want to say this right now. In your face, devil, because there's a God that's in control of everything. There's a God that knows everything. Amen. If any devil can try to get you down, he wants to get you down in the day in which you're living. But I come to you in the name of Jesus. I said be encouraged in the Lord. My God, my God, my God. You know, I don't, I don't know about you, friend, but I get mad at the devil. <laughs> Amen. I'm glad that God is doing great things in this day and hour. You say, by what authority? I'm talking about by God himself, friend. Understand God, which himself that came down in the form of flesh. Understand, friend, that robed himself in flesh. What authority am I talking about, friend? I'm talking about the name of Jesus. Friend, he's the Father. He's the Son. I'm going to tell you this. He's the Holy Ghost, friend. I'll tell you this. He's everything you ever needed. Amen. And I praise the Lord. Amen. I'll tell you what, this is just Brother Mascot, but I believe God's about ready to do something. I really do. I feel that God is about ready to do something if we're ready for what he's got. Amen. Amen. Can I say to the church tonight, and I want you to understand, it's no time to go to sleep on an apostolic pew. It's no time to go to hell on an apostolic pew. It's a time to awaken to the hour. My God, my God, praise the Lord. Could you get me some water, please? Thank you. Uh, you say, preacher, what do you mean it's no time to go to sleep? I'm going to tell you right now, if the devil can try to get you to take a nap, he is accomplishing his purpose. And I'm going to say this, especially in the hour in which we are living. Amen. Can I say to you to church uh, tonight that, that, that I believe there are some of y'all tonight in this place, you really don't know what's going on in our world. But I'm here to tell you something. I believe that God is in the midst of wrapping up some things before his coming, friend. I'm not saying whether it's going to be pre-trib, if it's going to be mid, or it's going to be post or pre wrap But I'm saying this. God is doing something in the background. And it's no time to go to sleep or to go to hell on an apostolic pew. It's about time to arise to the occasion. It's about time to say, God, even so, Jesus. Let's stand tonight. You thought I was going to dismiss you, but you're crazy. Come on, hallelujah. Shake your head. Come on, shake it loose. We're going to do this again. Amen. 
Praise the Lord. You say it's Thursday night, preacher. I know it's Thursday night, but I know God's still alive. I know God still moves on a Thursday night. Come on, Holy Ghost. Come on, Jesus. Mm. My God, my God. Thank you, brother. Amen. Thank you kindly. Amen. You may be seated for now. Praise the Lord. Like I told you, I'm mixed, man. I'm mixed from here to there and somewhere in between. Can I say this? You know, amen. I knew I wasn't going to get a praise, Lord. I don't care. I'll amen myself and praise the Lord myself. Amen. I kind of do like David did, you know. When it, when it came to the Ark of the Covenant, friend, and it was at Obadiah's place. I'll tell you what the Bible said. He took six paces. When he took six paces, he stopped. He began to jump up and down. He began to worship. He began to sacrifice. I'm going to tell you, friend, I believe God is expecting some sacrifices in this last hour that we're living. Hey, man, I want to say once again, in your face, devil, there's a God that's going to have the victory through it all. My God, my God, you know, myself, I, I like to keep up on current events. I like to keep up on what's going on. Can I say this? If you read the current events all the time, you're going to get depressed. <laughs> but nevertheless, hallelujah, and uh, you know, there's been a lot of rhetoric that's been going on the last few days, and uh I will say this. The Bible did make the statement that, you know, we are going to be living in perilous times. When the Bible talks about perilous, it talks about dangerous times. Days of uncertainty, not knowing what's going to take place or, or what is going to happen. Amen. And I want to say once again, I do thank God for the United States of America. And I'm hoping and I'm praying. And I remember the words of what Brother Kessling had mentioned. And, and I thought, you know, Brother Kessling, I think you might have missed the boat a little bit on this one. But he said, you know, I'm praying that God will raise up a man in this last time that will help to try and turn the United States back around. Now, let me say tonight, friend, get on your news and everybody's down on Trump. Get on it and, and just listen a little bit, and I'll tell you what, the media is trying to rip him up and do everything that is going on. And you know what? The Bible said, you know, and I will be hated for my name's sake. Anybody that's going to take a stand for Jesus Christ in this last day, I'm going to tell you something. You're going to be hated for the name of Jesus Christ. But I'm going to say this. You are their salvation. You are their peace. You are their refuge, friend. So I'm going to say to you once again, stand up and claim that name of Jesus. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Thank the Lord for the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. I was looking across the news and I was researching on some things. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff that's coming out about this, this uh, President Trump. Uh, can I say this? He's the only president that I know in some time that will listen to the Christians. You listen. And not only that, my understanding is, is he has taken some of the advice from the Christians. Can I say this, friend? I, come on. I don't know how, how God is going to plan this thing when it's done and over with, but I do know this. I, I believe that God is going to try to help the United States one more time. I, I'm praying, God, I, send every backslider through. I, God, pray through everybody that needs to get prayed through. I, we know, Lord, you're coming back before long, I, but God, some way or another... But you talk about the media, friend. I have never seen anybody so down on Trump. My God. The last three days, and I'm always popping up the news because I want to kind of keep up on the news. And, and uh, I see coming across that his ratings are the lowest that they have ever been. It's been the lowest, friend, of another president. But can I say this? You know... And this is just Brother Master. Can I throw this out there? Please don't judge me, okay? Can you imagine what our country would be like right now with Clinton, our president? Yes. 
Yes. Let me just throw this out right now, okay? Can you imagine right now if Obama was still our president? So let me put it out. What's wrong with a man getting some backbone and saying we're not putting up with some stuff? Press, you say what you want to say. But I'm telling you what, this is the United States of America. And friend, how God unfolds things, I leave it to him, friend. All I know is this, is that, friend, you better be raptured ready for whatever happens. Did you hear what I said? I I said it's no time to go to sleep on an apostolic pew. I'm going to say it again. I said it's no time to go to sleep on an apostolic pew. It's about time to rise to the occasion. My God. My Lord, I'm going to say there ain't going to be no dead people in heaven. <laughs> the Bible said those that are dead in Christ are going to be first to rise, friend. And I'm going to tell you this. I, you know, this is just me, friend. When I leave this world, I'm going out of kicking. I'm going out of stomping. I'm going out screaming, Jesus, I, I want you to understand, friend. You're living for God. You better start kicking. You better start fighting. You better start giving it everything you got and not just sit on that pew. Amen. I want you to take your elbow. Poke somebody next to you. Say, are you raptured ready? Come on. You think I'm joking? You know? You take that other elbow. Get him in the rib. You hear what I said? My God. My God. Friend, I'm going to tell you what. I was raised on this truth. Can I say this? Just because I was raised on it don't mean I just accepted it. And I want to say to you, precious child of God, you better not just accept it, but you better dig it out. You better know what the truth is. You better know what salvation's all about. My God. My God, and uh, you'd be amazed how many people are sitting on apostolic pews right now. Can't even tell me four passages in the Bible about how to be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost and baptized in Jesus' name. Come on, I'm just, I'm just talking. Can I be honest with you? We've sat on Pentecostal pews for so long. Preacher, preach to me and give me something to eat and something to chew. But I'm going to tell you something. Unless you digest it, unless you get it heartfelt on the inside, until you get to a place, I I want to make sure Brother Matscroft ain't telling a lie. I want to know he's telling the truth. And you get your eyes right in that book and you begin to open it up, friend. I'll say this, you're going to realize I'm preaching the truth. Friend, our world don't know. The apostolics ought to know. But friend, you talk about a day to go to sleep. You talk about an hour for the church to lay back. My God. You talk about dead churches, dry churches. Churches that, come on, don't you make me uncomfortable, preacher, by by what you're preaching because you're beginning to mow my lawn. I'm going to say to you tonight, friend, I need my lawn mowed quite often. Did you hear what I said? I need my lawn mowed quite often. I I tell you what, I got a wife that gets nervous. She says, quit picking on me, John. And I'm going to tell you what. She expects that lawn to be mowed seven days from the day it gets mowed. And she said, John, I want you to make sure that every week this lawn is going to get mowed. I said, baby, you're looking at the wrong person. You know, I just had a heart attack. (laughs) Oh, us apostolics, we know how to do it, don't we? You know, I'm just not up to par. I've I've just had a, uh, you know, preacher, you don't understand my circumstance. You know, I don't need to understand your circumstance because I know he understands your circumstance. But can I say this? I I believe that God expects us to do something. I I believe that God is expecting the apostolic Bible church, friend, uh, to somewhere step beyond where they're at tonight. Come on, everybody got to shout, jump up. Anybody got a big?
victory. Say hallelujah. My God. Amen. And you talk about it, you can be seated if you want. You don't have to. But my God, I'll tell you something. You're talking about how the Lord himself moved the multitudes. You talk about the sermons and the parables and the teachings of Jesus Christ's friend. I'll tell you this. You know, I'll say this. When he decided to move from one location to the next, he didn't go out broadcasting it for a year or two. But there was something, friend, the people began to hear some things. They began to hear about the healings, about the miracles. They began to hear about the supernatural of the almighty God, friend. And understand, they're beginning to wonder, who is this Jesus Christ that has come unto us, friend? I want to tell you something, friend. We know who he is today. Back then, there were those that were looking for hope, for peace, and for joy. They were looking for the coming of the Messiah. And friend, there was one that came in the name of Jesus. And you talk about phenomenal teachings. You talk about parables that came across, friend. He didn't have a meeting for one hour. But the Bible had mentioned that the sun was going down. It was beginning to get late in the day, and he had to let them go. I believe that multitude, that they were hung on the words of Jesus Christ. Can I say this? When we as a church, we come to a place... Preacher, feed me everything I need to know. I don't care how late the day is getting. And I don't care how late the night may be. But I desire for the hunger, for the truth and the righteousness of God. And I want to say to the church, we need to desire for the right things. Amen, 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 amen. Praise the Lord. You know, God don't have to have everybody. All he's got to do is have a few. Can I say this? If God's going to do something great, all he needs is just one. He needs a vessel that he can work through. A vessel, friend, that is willing to do what needs to be done. Did you talk about the miraculous, friend? Yeah, and, and I want to just say this, and maybe I can provoke you to thought tonight a little bit. Do you realize what's going on in our world right now? I believe that, God, that Jesus Christ is orchestrating some of the greatest events that understand is happening right now. You know, how many times have we as Christians heard in the 24th chapter of St. Matthew about the fact that, you know, the disciples were gathered with him that day and said, Lord, tell us the signs of the end time. And you know what? It becomes so casual that after a while we become somewhat numb to what has happened. Do you know what I'm saying? He says there's going to be wars, rumors of wars. He said, you know, there's going to be pestilence. It's going to be perilous times. It's going to be times there's going to be earthquakes and uh, these, these things that are going to happen. And I begin to look back upon just this year in 2017. Come on, friend. I'm not talking about the last three or four or five years. But it seems like around our world, the amount of earthquakes that are taking place is at an all-time high. What do you mean? I was looking in the month of March. And then got into the month of April. And I could not see an earthquake that was under 5.0. Come on, friend. 5.0 can do some damage. I seen the average one was about 5.2, and there were some that were greater. But the Lord said in the last days, there was going to be earthquakes upon earthquakes. I want to say to the church, I never want to come to a place that I become numb to what God said. Because the, what God said is going to happen and going to take place. My God, you talk about floods. You look over in, I believe it's China. and You talk about Floods that are way above the normal. I'm talking about cities that are being devastated. I'm telling you something, friend. When we hear something like that, what, what comes to you in mind? Oh, I've heard this before. I remember one man that was attending church here some years ago, and he had made the comment, oh, I heard it from my grandma. I've heard it from my grandpa. And, you know, nothing's ever happened yet. But I'm going to say this, friend. If God has said it, it's going to happen. I said, if God said it, it's going to happen. I don't care if you doubt it. I don't care if you don't believe it. I'm saying this. If God said it.
said it, it's going to happen. And you know, can I say this? You can live for God the way you want to live for God. But I want you to understand, friend, nevertheless, things are going to happen. I looked at a, I was reading an article and And when I was reading that article, give me a moment. Amen. I want to ask you a question. Can somebody say praise the Lord? Praise the Lord. Amen. I'm all over the place tonight, so I just want to mess it all the way up. Hallelujah. God be the glory. Amen. Somebody say amen again. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just about there. Praise the Lord. God in everything. There was a boss one time and. And, you know, these people were looking for jobs, okay? Now, I want to ask you a question. Look in that mirror. I want to ask you a question, okay? And we know who's in the mirror is you, not Joe sitting next to you or Mary on the other side. But I want to ask you a question. Would you hire this person? Some of you won't be honest. And in another office, there was a mirror and a sign posted this question. Are you ready for the job? Let me ask you a question tonight. Are you raptured ready? I didn't say, look at Loopy. I said, are you raptured ready? Amen. And uh, I will say this, you know, sometimes we need to look at some things and uh, realize, come on, where we're really at. There was one person one time that asked, and I'm, I know there's many of you before that have heard the name Dwight L. Moody. And they asked him a question and said, if you knew... The Lord would return tonight. How would you spend the rest of your day? Well, you know, I get prayed through. You know, can I say this? If you're not getting prayed through now, I doubt if you get prayed through. Let me ask that question just once again. And I want you to ask yourself that, okay? If you knew the Lord would return tonight... How would you spend the rest of your day? It's so quiet in here. At least I got your attention. Give me a brick so I can hit them. Mr. Moody replied without hesitation, I wouldn't do anything different than I do every day. You know what he was saying? He said, I'm going to tell you right now. If Jesus comes back right now, I am ready to go and I am prepared because I'm doing everything I'm supposed to do. I got my eyes in the book and I got my mind and my eyes on Jesus. Do you hear what I'm saying tonight, friend? If you've got to change some things, my God, when are you going to change them? I don't like this kind of preaching, preacher. You know what? I'd rather have somebody rattle my case. Do you hear what I said? I'd rather have somebody read my book and tell me just like it is, friend, because I still got time to get it ready. But the Bible said that there are going to be those that are hearers of the word. Well, let's get down on the word. Well, why don't we get down on us? I'm not going to get down on Brother McVeigh. Let's get down on me. Because you know what? If I can get down on me, I can change some things. But if I get down on my brother, my God, I got double the load to take care of. Ooh. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm just trying to give you a few gold nuggets tonight. 
Brother Mascroft, why don't you go take another vacation? <laughs> to be honest with you, I didn't have one. We took a few days off, and the best sleep I ever had was when I got back home in my own bed. You can stay in the nicest motel there is, but I'm going to tell you this, they don't got a bed like I got. Come on, you say, well, man, Brother Mascroft, you spend a lot of money for your bed. You spend a lot of money for your car. And I sleep in my bed a whole lot more than you sleep in your car. Or you're riding in your car. Come on, hallelujah. Can somebody say amen tonight? I said, can somebody say praise the Lord? Man, and what are you saying, preacher? You know, I'm, I'm excited. You know why? It's about over. Well, Brother Mascoff, we haven't even had the signing of the covenant yet. No, but it's sure getting close. Mm. Well, what does that mean, Brother Mascroft? Whoa, I'm glad you asked. That means that we're down to seven years. My God. Now, understand, I didn't say seven years for the church. I'm praying the sooner the better. But I'll say this. I believe God's going to take us as a church through some things. Did you hear what I said? Come on, you talk about any apostolics ought to get riled up in themselves. I'm going to tell you right now, you ought to get beside yourself and and look yourself right in the mirror and say, when I come back to church on Sunday, I'll tell you what, I'm going to get a hold of this old boy in the next two or three days. I'm going to let God do a work on this flesh. Come on, church. I I said, I'm going to let God do a work on this old boy. My God, you say, Brother Matzkoff, I received a phone call not too long ago, and and I think I mentioned to the church, I said, you know, they're beginning to implant the chip. I said, praise the Lord. Isn't it neat? They look back at me and say, what's your problem? Shouldn't you be scared and shouldn't you be weary about, well, why should I? Well, you, you know, you're not going to be able to buy. You're not going to be able to sell. And Well, what you worried about? Come on, where is your hope in? Where is your trust in, friend? Where is your confidence in? Where is your peace and your joy in? I'm telling you so, even so, Lord Jesus, come back quickly. Mm-hmm. Say, man, preacher, you're weird. No, you're weird. Maybe you need to take another look. My God. We're about ready to have the biggest prayer meeting we've had in a long time. And it's not going to be like our Tuesday night prayer meeting, friend. But I believe there's a time that's coming very short. There's going to be people that's going to be at an altar. Come on, you ain't going to have to invite them to come to church. Friend, they're going to come through those doors. You talk about backsliders. You talk about those ones that had the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you something. God is coming back for a church. Now, the important thing is this, that prayer meeting needs to take place before the rapture. After the rapture, it's too late. Well, Brother Matscroft, don't you believe it's pre-trib? I want to believe it. I really do. I want to believe it. But God didn't say that we would escape man's wrath. He did say that the wrath isn't for us, the church. I'm talking about God's wrath. But I'll say this. Whatever man's wrath. You know this? If Kong Chu Ung, something like that, had his way, man, you would be a frying. Did you hear what the President of the United States said the other day and said you brought it to my attention? You know, few years before I was born, Harry Truman was the president of the United States of America. And just like it is now with North Korea accusations that are being made against the United States, he got a little bit tired and he made a news conference that went over to the other nations of the world in Japan and said, I just want to let you know that soon 
there is going to be fire and fury that is going to rain down upon this earth. Nobody knew what the atomic bomb war was. And you talk about Hiroshima, friend. Hiroshima took place, and I'll tell you what, it took care of a lot of problems. We now got, can I better say, a dictator. That uh, can, can I just put it this way? I believe the devil is trying to mess up the minds of leaders. He is going to confuse any leader that he can. But, you know, it's amazing how some leader, and I'll put it this way, of North Korea has got the gall to say what it says. That in the news that came out the other day that they were going to more or less attack, attack Guam. They have mentioned before, and, and it's been, I, I believe, the news that came across that they now have the capabilities of an uh, interballistic missile with a small nuclear head that they can put on top and been pretty successful. Not that they've gotten where they need to get to, but they can at least reach Guam and some other areas. President Trump came back the other day, and I've heard nothing but the news. Knock it, knock it, knock it. You know why the news is knocking it? Because they're not for anything that's right and good. Anybody that's got any backbone that's going to stand up against some things. They, they, they try to make him sound like the bad guy, friend. They, they try to make so much confusion. And with everything else that is going on, and President Trump came back, and he made a news conference to the world. And he said, I'm telling you right now that North Korea, you better stop your threats. Because if you don't, remember the words of Truman, what I said, rain and fire. He said, there, there is coming soon a fury of fire and rain such as man has never known before. Such as man has never known before. You're saying, preacher, what, he's got to go through Congress. No, he doesn't, friend. Come on. I said there is a time when the United States of America understand is under attack and understand the words of the president had said this. That our allies is the same as us. If you attack one of our allies, it's like attacking us. So I'm saying this right now, friend. He can step in at the time that is needed and declare whatever needs to be done. I'm going to say this, church. I'm going to say this. And we, we've heard this before. Uh, understand that uh, and understand whatever happens is in God's hands. But understand before Armageddon, we know there's another major war supposed to take place. Did you hear what I said? Another major war, friend. And I believe what the Bible has said, I believe it too, the fourth or a third of the world is going to be destroyed. If we're at seven, seven and a half billion people, we're talking about roughly a little over two million, two and a half million people, friend, that are going to be taken out of this world. Can I say this right now? It's no time to play, friend, because what's going on is going on. I'm, I'm not a prophet, but I'll say this. I think there's sometimes we better start reading the writing on the wall and what's taking place in our world. Friend, God is trying to tell his church, I want you to know something, and if God's going to give the United States of America another chance, I want to say this. Let's do the best that we can when it comes to God, reaching somebody for him. I'm reaching somebody and get them to get the Holy Ghost, friend, in our last Stay an hour. Amen. Let's stand tonight. Hallelujah. Musicians, don't worry about coming up. Don't worry about coming up. But I'm talking to the church tonight, friend. I'm going to say this. Hallelujah. And I've said it for years, and I'm going to keep on saying it. We're not going to have a whole lot more services here at the Apostolic Bible Church. What do you mean not a whole lot more? It ain't going to be another 25. You know, friend, I don't believe it's going to be another 25. You know, what it is is what it is. But I want to say to every child of God, if you've ever dug in before, it's about time you start digging in. Come on, friend, when you go to war and you go to battle, I'm going to tell you something. There's, there's places you better dig a rut and get yourself in some place that you can hide and get away from the mischief because understand, when hell begins to break loose, friend, come on, it's going to be more than, oh, my God, Jesus, help me. Friend, it's time right now. God, I want to make sure this old boy is ready. I want to make sure I'm rapture ready. I want to make sure, God, I'm in alignment with you. You know, you know people say, well, you're kind of a fanatic, Brother Mascroft. No, I'm not. No, I'm not. You know, I'd rather be up front with you right now on some things. If you can't, Belshazzar didn't understand. I'll put it this way. He didn't want to recognize some things. 
He knew what Daddy Nebuchadnezzar went through. The seven years in the field and how, and how God had turned him into a beast. And, and friend, if anybody should have learned, it should have been Nebuchadnezzar. Come on. Belshazzar one day begins to mess with the sacred instruments of God. Begins to make a feast out of it. And God had just a little bit more than he was going to take. He began to put the hand writing upon the wall. Many, many, tickle you farson, for you are weighed in the balances. And tonight your kingdom will be given to the Medes and to the Persians. Can I say this, friend? God isn't going to linger forever. You know why? Because he prophesied in his word that he was going to do some things. And, friend, I'm going to say this. God ain't going to hold on forever because his word is going to come true. But, friend, thank God for the salvation salvation of today that we can partake of what God has given us. Somebody say amen. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. Elbow somebody again. And ask him this question. When are you going to get ready? Husband, elbow your wife. And say, when are you going to pray through? Wife, act like your husband's there. And, but if he is, then fine. Come on, boy, when are you going to line out? It's a lot of truth. It's a lot of truth. My God. Are you worried, Brother Mascroft? No. Might as well get excited. <laughs> Amen. Praise the Lord. Everybody's looking for a sign, and God puts it out there, and we just ignore it. So are you going to take the mark? I have a question to ask you, and I'm just going to provoke you to thought. Just because they put a chip in your hand, is it the mark? No. Not at first, maybe. It's coming. <laughs> I mean, it's out there. You talking about the identity crisis? Oh, my God. I'm going to tell you this. Identity is very important. My wife, uh, she said, John, uh, she had to get a marriage license for her uh, CDL for her uh, driving the bus, get it renewed. She says, John, I ain't got a, ma a marriage license. So that means we're free then, babe, right? <laughs> so she sends into the state and gets a brand new, bur I mean, a, a new li marriage license. You know. <laughs> I hope in your vows they're a lot stronger than what a piece of paper is. Amen. It's a little quiet here tonight. Some people are looking for out in their marriage. Problem. Why don't you learn to love them? Well, Brother Master, I can't love my husband or my wife. Then why don't you just pray through? Brother Mascoff, you don't know the hell they put me through. I don't want to know. <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I wouldn't want to live with some of you anyway. <laughs> Whoa. Man, we better bow our heads and dismiss in Jesus' name. Lord, we thank you tonight. I pray, God, we go home here. Take some things to heart. 